Led the Bears to a comeback victory over the 49ers with four touchdown passes and zero picks. Cutler connected with Brandon Marshall for three and tight end Martellus Bennett for one. Here's Marshall after the game. It's tough being in games like this, but what happens is it, it builds uh, character. It, it builds um, a stronger backbone. Uh, we're going to need it, you know, with the schedule that we have and uh, what we're trying to accomplish. So it's tough to be in this situation, but uh, I think we grew a lot tonight. Yeah, it's you. How, how impressed were you? I was very impressed, Kid Bayless. I must admit that about the Chicago mm -hmm. Bears and in particular your guy, Jay Cutler. I also want to applaud Brandon Marshall for his bravery wearing that jacket that he wore. Say, but I, I won't was, go there. No, but I, I mean, was just going to say. He was very brave with that jacket <laughs> yesterday. I, I thought you were going to say bravery for <laughs> playing with a bad ankle. No, no listen, I was listen, like, Stephen A has to comment on that jacket. I have no doubt that <laughs> Brandon Marshall and Alshon Jeffrey with the ankle and groin injury respectively were going to play in last night's game. You're going up against the San Francisco 49ers. You're in danger or fall in the 0 and 2, you're going to play in that game if you're going to be the players that you say you are and that you're going to be. I knew they were going to play. Um, them being down, Colin Kaepernick didn't help with his three interceptions. The last two were not impressive. Uh, San Diego, uh, San Francisco, rather, their offense is not that impressive. Uh, I mean, how many times are you going to look to Crabtree for crying out loud? I mean, mm -hmm. you just got to find a way uh, to get around that and to do what you need to do. Vernon Davis is out there for a reason. Bolden is out there for a reason. It ain't just Crabtree. Uh, I'm just looking at their offense right now, and I'm not thoroughly impressed with what I'm seeing from the San Francisco 49ers. Their home crowd is just pathetic. I mean, I'm sorry. I have to call them out on national television. I, I mean, at, at certain points, I thought this was Soldier Field. Really? I mean, it was loud up in there. Every time Chicago made a play, I didn't hear boos. I heard cheers, okay? I, something wrong with that home crowd. I kind of missed them at Candlestick Park because what I'm seeing is just not impressive. Their home crowd is just pathetic right now. Get it together, please. But let me get back to this team. The Chicago Bears, we know they have the requisite weapons. You got Cutler. <clears throat> you got Forte. You got Jeffries. You got Bennett, who scored the, scored the touchdown pass. You got Jeffries. They got weapons all over the place. They showed up last night. They could have easily folded. They didn't. Against San Francisco's defense, albeit devoid of Bowman, devoid of Alden yeah. Smith and those boys, you know, still in all, you're a respectable defense, and you had a lead. And you couldn't hold it if you were the San Francisco 49ers because the Bears offense showed up. And I look at them, balanced offensive attack. Jay Cutler spreading the ball, just 176 yards, but a 119 passer rating, which means he basically didn't beat himself. And I just looked at them and I said, you know something? This is the kind of team that could make some noise if they could be consistent. I'm still not sold on them, but last night they surprised me. I did not expect them to come back and win that game. They got it done. They deserve a lot of credit. All great points. Now, here's my bottom line takeaway from what I witnessed last night. And I stayed up for the last drop. So it was good to the did last did drop. So did I. Literally to the last drop uh -huh. because Crabtree almost had almost that had last it. pass. Almost that was it. close. It was, it was a pretty good throw. Touched it was, it was his hands, tough. but it was still tough. a tough catch to pass to catch. My takeaway is Colin Kaepernick last night mm. turned into Jay Cutler. Bad Jay Cutler. The, the Cutler you often criticize, rightfully so, on this show. Right. Colin Kaepernick, as the favorite in this game, tried to rely on his huge arm to a fault. Yeah. I'm going to throw it through that crack. I'm going to yeah. throw it between those two guys. I'm going to get away with this over here because we got to blow these guys out because they should have blown them out right. in the first half. It looked like several points it was going to turn into a blowout. And he threw three picks. And he also, as Jay often does, got a little careless with the football, this on a run. And Jared Allen put his helmet on the football, and it's free. So Colin Kaepernick hands the Chicago Bears four turnovers. Jay Cutler, the most important number of the night for Big Jay? Zero. Thank you very much. You're way ahead of the game. Yeah. Miss champion. Way zero. to go. You get a yeah. star. Gold yeah, star. Yeah, gold star for a kid. Gold yeah. star. The big zero. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. Jay Culler didn't turn the ball over. You know why he didn't in my humble estimation? Go ahead. As I evaluate my fellow Commodore. Mm -hmm. Yes. Jay Cutler knew that last night Alshon Jeffrey is dragging around a bad hamstring and Brandon Marshall is hobbled on a really yep. bad ankle. Neither one of them could run, so you can't force anything. You got to be, and I don't use these words too often with Jay Cutler, poised and patient. 
He was poised and patient. He hung right in there. There was a little game manager going on in the second half with Jay Cutler. What was he? 13 of 14 in the second half for yeah. just 121. So no, no mm -hmm. huge gains. Right. But, but accurate, yeah. poised, good decision making. This is good, Jay. This is what I wanted to see because he knew he couldn't get away. You can't be throwing it up for grabs in a night like that because who's going to go get those passes? Martellus occasionally, but not not that often. So to me. I love the way he played, and I got to point out this once again. A lot of people think Jake Cutler's kind of weak. He's a little soft. Nobody, nobody in this league has taken more punishment and jumped up from it over the last, what, six or eight years than Jay Cutler has. And can we see that play that Dial got him last night? Remember this? Mm -hmm. Late in the, the first half. Boom! He gets the spear job right in the, the chest. Oh, that, that, that wasn't, wasn't it. it. That Whoops. wasn't it. Oh, they we, we, show we, it again. Yeah. yeah. They showed it again. Yeah. yeah, that was it. There. Boom! And Chris Collinsworth immediately said, I'm not sure he's going to get up from this one. And I wasn't sure either. But Stephen A., did he not jump right up and throw a touchdown pass to Brandon Marshall? Well, listen. That got them back in the game? Listen, first of all, anybody that knows anything about football knows Jay Cutler's toughness. But at the same time, that doesn't mean you negate or neglect or engage in selective amnesia when it comes to that NFC Championship game against the Green Bay Packers, when suddenly all that toughness uh -oh. wasn't enough because you couldn't backpedal to throw in the pocket, but you could be on the sidelines riding a bicycle. That's what well. the knock against Jay Cutler was because it's the closest you've ever been to a Super Bowl appearance. Okay. It's the one season you actually had a playoff victory in your entire career. All you needed was another one, and you were going to the okay. Super Bowl, and you couldn't go after taking all the punishment over the years that you've taken okay. in every other circumstance. But, but he was diagnosed by the Bears doctors with a sprained medial collateral ligament. I understand. And he said he couldn't plant and throw. When he stepped back to plant his right leg, it was buckling under him. And he said, I'm just going to hurt my team if I try to play. All right. You can look at it that way. I look at it as there's plenty of instances and circumstances where he was getting popped silly. He didn't even seem to be in his right mind. He was like a boxer that, mm -hmm. that, that, that got up and received a standing eight count and was still wobbling in front of the referee. And he still went out there and threw passes, albeit interceptions half the time. He still went out there and played. My attitude is you in the NFC Championship game, your heart beat away from the Super Bowl, go for it. That's just me. That's just me, okay. because he's always taking it. Now, All if he had gotten injured and left games before, that would be different. But you take everything every other time, but you're a heartbeat away from the Super Bowl, you're in the NFC Championship game, mm -hmm. and suddenly you can't go? I'm sorry. That's a hard issue to me. That's okay. a hard issue to I me. I cannot defend his playoff resume. No, you can't. But I can say that last night was a blueprint for good Jay Cutler. Sure. If we could see more of that going forward, yeah. I think they have a chance to be pretty good. Well, I think good. if we can see more of that more often, you can say that about a lot of quarterbacks. The fact of the matter is Jay Cutler hasn't given you any reason to expect to see that from him. It's about, what is it, nine years and one playoff victory? Very Tony Romo-esque. So I'm sorry. So I'm after not, all those so good things boy, you said. Midwest. Right? That's right. Go on. You said all those good things about Jay Cutler, but then Listen, you had he to deser slam. he deserves the credit for last night's performance, but it was one night. Here's your cookie. Uh, Bayless says he was much of a game manager, dare he say, but in a good way. Martellus Bennett on Jay Cutler in the huddle, he said he absolutely was a game manager. He controlled <laughs> everyone's emotions.